You're watching 90s Rock in 9 Minutes. I'm Sam Bass. This is Craig Welch of Brutal Juice. And we're going over their record, Mutilation Makes Identification Difficult. You are the first artist we've had on the show. And uh, you're the vocalist of Brutal Juice. I'm sure you know that. But uh, thank you for being on here. Thank you, man. It's an honor. Uh, thank you. So Mutilation Makes Identification Difficult. Your major label debut for Interscope Records. How did that make you feel? Great. It's like dream come true. I would feel the same way, man. And the cover, where did this picture come from? What is that? A dude named, I think, David Quadrini. He uh, it was a bigger painting. I couldn't tell if this was like somebody with guts. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's a uh, chair wrapped in intestines. That's what I thought it was. And I, because, the, you know, the title is Mutilation makes identification difficult. What's up with that? One of the headlines in the papers from, from nearby, you know, small town where we were in South Texas, the, was, the headline was, body found in park mutilation makes identification difficult. And I think someone's like, oh, that's, that's a good title for, our, for this album. And so it stuck. Nice. And that's, I've never heard an album titled that graphic of a thing but you live up to it with i here's here's a thing i have noticed about this album and a lot of people have an iconic cover to their album and i feel like this is the only album i've ever seen that has an iconic back to the album there's two two versions of the bloody toilet yeah that's the 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 uh i mean i think it was suggested that would change the back of the cover to something easier yeah I wanted to get into that so you, it was suggested that you change the album art from a blood splattered diarrhea filled toilet to something else yeah I'm, why would I mean that's great why would anybody ever want to change that I don't know I think it, it's like sell more or something yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure as a kid you would have been attracted to the Toilet. I would have. You're like, oh, cool, blood toilet. I'm, I'm yeah, buying this album. Absolutely, I would have been all over that. I would have wanted that to be Man, the front cover. Should have kept that. I know not everybody has that reaction to seeing a diarrhea filled, blood splattered toilet, but um, I did. <laughs> I made a show, Homeless in Denton, which I know that you know about because you your band was on it. Your other band. Uh, fabulous badasses so this was right up my alley actually I think we in the show we had a, a shot of a diarrhea filled toilet as well so we we're, were, we were meant to collaborate indeed indeed alright I'm gonna just oh there's a see it's uh, yeah that's the thing about this album I didn't album. know that it appeared twice that's the thing about this album is like just in case you were wondering whether or not this was just sort of something thrown on the back of the album, you know, in a in a moment of God knows what they were thinking. Well, it's, it's fake. It's not. It's not real blood, and it's not real other stuff. You guys faked this? I thought, man, you guys are posers. I thought this was real, man. You did a music video for what song? What was the single? Uh, ugly on the inside. We did the video for it. It was originally called the Vaginals. Yeah, that's right. Appears on here. Yeah, and I see that the the, the uh, promo sticker for what singles are on there. It's called the Vaginals. But whenever it debuted on MTV, why did you change the name to Ugly on the Inside? Well, just like that, it was suggested we change the name of the song. So they wanted to take out the diarrhea bloody toilet. And change the name from the vaginals and like tone it, dial it down a little bit. To I guess. And I find what's interesting about that is it seemed like, from what you're telling me and what I'm seeing, is they well, they wanted you to dial it down a little bit. But here as a fan, like, you know, I was a, right around your target audience, or, your, or not that you had a target audience, but a teenager in the 90s. I loved, you know, I would have and do love the things that they wanted to dial down, like the toilet. And the name, The Vaginals, I mean, come on. I'd never even heard of that. So, I think your record label was wrong. 
Whoever suggested, I think they're wrong too. They should have just kept everything how it was. But we yeah, didn't, so. Th this is a message to Jimmy Iovine. You screwed up, man. You fumbled the ball. Anyway. Whoa. <laughs> what, can I not say that? Yeah, you can. I have here a clip, and this is Stabbing Westward introducing your band, uh, or your video, Ugly on the Inside, on MTV. And uh, let's get into that. I'm just going to play this for you, and we'll go over after just what, what happened here. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for staying up late for 120 minutes. We are Stabbing Westward, and we've been guest hosting tonight. The final video on the show is from a self-described acid punk band out of Denton, Texas. Yeah. They're called Brutal Juice. Their major label debut album is called Mutilation Makes Identification Difficult. That's pleasant. And here's the first video off of it. It's called Ugly on the Inside. So... What's the deal? Did you guys have a uh, some kind of feud or something? It just seems like they were being kind of like snotty about about introducing you. I heard that they said that this band sucks, and that bummed me out a little bit. But I don't know. I, I never heard a Stabbing Westward song, so. So you I, never even heard a Stabbing Westward song? No, I haven't. Then, so I can't say they suck or don't suck. Well, that's a very, so, you're taking a very mature approach. If somebody was talking about my band, they were like, yeah, should pull up, well, man. I'd be like, you know what? You're an industrial rock wannabe ripoff of Nine Inch Nails on MTV. <laughs> so, Whoa. Did you know that Brutal Juice is thanked in this album? I did not know that. Wow. So uh, you're learning about this right now, right here on 90s Rock in Nine Minutes. The Toadies, by the way, this is Rubberneck. This is a Texas grunge classic, and we're going to get into that later. But it's a really good album. I love it. I love this album, too. And yeah, right there, there's Brutal Juice. I'll check that out. So. And this is, now, the reason why you were thanked, if, if I'm not mistaken, you went on tour with them, didn't you? Yeah, I was, we went on tour with them once. What are some stories on tour that happened? I was I was pussy boy. You were pussy boy. Yeah. Uh, Lisa got me a pins undergarment. Lisa Umberger. Yes, right. Lisa Umberger. The bass player. Got me a pins undergarment and drew a cat on the crotch area, and I put it on. I was like, ran out on the stage in it, and. On the, during their set, yeah, you were I think in Pittsburgh. Oh, pussy, pussy boy, hit the kick drum. Pussy boy, pussy boy. Oh, so you had your own intro. I'd run out and sing, sing a couple song, a uh, song with them, and run off. So it was a lot of fun touring with them. You're you're on stage with an adult diaper that has a cat drawn on the crotch, right? And they're singing, puss, yelling, pussy boy, and you're dancing around. I can't think of anything more rock and roll than that. While we're on the subject of the Toadies, there's something really, really cool that you were able to do. Uh, you, and this is my favorite Toadies song, Tyler. You were actually in the music video for Tyler. Tune in next week for part two of 90s Rock in 9 Minutes with Craig Welch of Brutal Juice. Get the rundown on his cameo in a Toadies music video and hear twisted tales from the tour. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe.